Hi everyone, my name is Ali Manning from Vintage Page Designs and I am extremely excited to welcome to the channel today the amazing Kate Ward who is a textile artist in near Halifax, Nova Scotia. Hello Kate, how are you? Hello, I'm really well. It's so nice to be here with you today, Ellie. Thank you. It's great to have you here too. Did I get that right? Nova Scotia? You're, you're, you're near Halifax, right? Yeah, I am. I'm just up the road from Halifax. So short hop, skip and a jump away, as you would say. Yes, <laughs> indeed. All right. So um, I don't know how many people know you, Kate. So would, would you mind awfully just kind of giving us a, well, why don't we start right at the beginning? The very let's start at the very beginning and um tell me like what is your background like what role did creativity play in you growing up were you like a creative kid did you always know you wanted to be an artist or is this something that sort of showed up later in your life yeah that's that's a really good question because um Growing up, I did have creativity around me all the time. So I had a mother who I think um, I think she had a sewing machine always around. So she was a, an entrepreneur. She had mum and dad had their own paint shop business. And so in the back, back office, she'd always have her sewing machine and her knitting and all that kind of stuff. So I had the opportunity to play with little scraps, you know, the little fabric scraps that you would get in um, wallpaper books and all that oh, kind of stuff. So yeah. I had a sense to, to play with those. Yeah. And um, so I was always making things for Barbie and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, you know, she was sewing and my grandmother taught me how to knit and just I was really lucky to be in an environment that fostered creativity. Mm. And I think one of my earliest memories aha memories anyway is mm. I was outside painting it was summer Australia and I ran inside I'm like mum mum I'm trying to paint a tree and I've run out of green and mum's like well have you got blue and yellow and I'm like yes but I don't have green Aww. and she's like there you go I know I know to this day I'm like wow this is amazing it's just the alchemy of colors so and she's like well if you've got blue and yellow mix them together and you've got green mm. and it kind of just blew my mind that you could mix two different colors together and get a third different color hmm. so I thought oh. wow that's amazing that's really amazing so anyway that was kind of like my kind of first foray into creativity yeah. but it wasn't really until oh, it was probably my ninth grade art teacher who said to mum like one of those parent and um hmm teacher interviews is like Kate really should take her art a little bit more seriously <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> meaning I had lots of talent and I really should yeah you know develop develop it more so um so that was kind of quite interesting I'm like oh okay maybe I should and then I think life just had a whole lot of serendipitous events I was very fortunate my um first boyfriend his mother was studying textiles at art school at the time and she was like you really should go to art school and yeah. um I'm like interesting. Mm, mm. it really was interesting because my parents wanted me to go to university and I'm like I'm not really sure that's my kind of thing but art yeah. school was this nice compromise because it was university but it was yeah. art yeah. and that was kind of like yeah. what really got me started on my my path of creativity I guess you could say so that's interesting that's a complete that's a different story than many people tell like you know the art teacher saying you should you have talent you should take it more seriously a lot of people say oh you know they had that one art teacher that didn't encourage them and then from then on they didn't do anything until like 20 years later so that's nice yeah yeah yes well there's lots of teachers out there. Unfortunately, not all of them are in, as encouraging. So, yeah, you got to listen to the ones that say good things. <laughs> and you grew up in Australia, right? I know you live in Canada now. We'll we'll get to that part, like how you got there. But um, you did you grew whereabouts in Australia did you grow up? 
Yeah, so um, I was born in Canberra, and for people who um, might not be that familiar with Australia, it's on the east coast of Australia, kind of halfway between Melbourne and Sydney. So Canberra is the capital, and it was created long after um, Australia was colonised. So it's kind of smack bang halfway in between Melbourne and Sydney, if you were to draw a straight line. So I grew, was born in Canberra um, and then had the opportunity to grow up down on the south coast. My parents moved down there and that's where the paint shop was. So I had this wonderful uh, childhood of growing up on the coast, you know, afternoons were spent at the swimming pool or down at the beach and nice. lots of long walks up and down the beach. Mm -hmm. um, which was really fabulous. And um, the other thing that was quite integral to my formative years, I guess you could say, is my mother's father was a farmer. Oh, and yeah. He, yeah. And I've just got the most amazing memories of, you know, feeding lambs and going and c collecting the eggs and making castles in the hay and, you know, all those oh. kind of like kids' yeah. adventure things. So. Yeah. Uh, it kind of, I think, just that being in nature and, I don't know, connecting with it, yeah. encourage creativity on another level as well. Just watching yeah. nature is so inspiring. So oh, That sounds idyllic, really. I know, it really you does. Know, <laughs> you, had the, you had the ocean and you also had, you know, like farm, you know, access to like a farm and oh, it sounds lovely. Yeah, yeah. So we were we were pretty lucky. So all the all those things I think also help, um, you know, encourage a connectivity with the earth as well and the environment and the animals. So yeah. I was very lucky to have that kind of thing mm. to grow up to it with, I guess. But yeah, that kind of grounding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. So you went to art school, and. Was it textiles that you studied primarily in art school or was it just general art and then you did textiles as a postgrad or how did that work? That's a really good question. So the way the, um, the art school system was set up at that time was the first year was called foundation year. And in foundation, we did all kinds of things. There was um, life drawing. There was a whole lot of theoretical components. There was sculpture uh, as well. And so we kind of did it a bit of everything to kind of make sure that that was the place that we wanted to be. And mm -hmm. then in second year, we then went into our workshop of choice. So mine was textiles mm -hmm. and um, it's, and so it was a four year program. So the first year was kind of just spent dabbling and trying out all the different things. Um, and so we then went into the workshop of choice, which was textiles, but we we're also encouraged to have, um, sub-major is what it was called and you could choose to work in a different workshop within the, the art school so mm -hmm. in second year I think I did paper making Ooh. <laughs> mm. yes and so that was that really blew my mind because we were doing things like making paper from cutting up jeans and turning it into rag paper and making the paper and then taking it one step further and um using the paper pulp to make sculptures and yeah. molds and all that kind of stuff which blew my mind and I tell you what I wish I'd got more into book arts at that time I wish I met you much long ago Ali so yeah, <laughs> it's glad me to make books long ago I had all this beautiful paper yeah. Um, yeah. and so that was really awesome and then in third year I had did a sub major in printmaking so we did a whole lot of etching and I used a lot of my handmade paper in that as well so mm -hmm. I had was very fortunate to do the textiles component which covered all kinds of things like yeah. uh, weaving tapestry um Ooh. surface design printmaking on so printing on fabric yeah. which was amazing shibori yeah. so it really covered a lot yeah. um so I'm quite had the opportunity to play with a lot of different techniques, and yeah. the intention was in your fourth year, final year, you then had to focus on one particular method of working, and then mm. 
and then create for the year. So, yeah. So I chose um, weaving of all things. I was weaving, oh. yeah, I was yeah. weaving um, fishing line, which uh, dyes these most amazing, beautiful colors. So it takes on dye. It's really rich. Really. Yeah, yeah, really. And so have a have a go. I tell you what, you can either do it with hair dye, so you get like the colours that you get in a hair dye bottle, yeah. or just like the rit hot dyes, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that nylon fishing line? No. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Well, I've learned something new. <laughs> I know, exactly. And so, uh, and I was really inspired by the ocean. So my my theme was, um, and it was really interesting actually, because at the time I, I couldn't quite put into words what I was trying to convey, but I was interested in spirituality even back then and trying to convey that through the ocean, through the colour blue. And um, a lot of the titles of my artworks had things like permanence and Hmm. um, transcendence and those kind of titles within it and um, some of and some of the weavings were because they was kind of see-through because they were a fishing line uh, had lots of little bits of the sea washed glass that I'd collected on the beach so from a distance all you saw were these things suspended in the air moving up towards the heavens so yeah. That, that was my beginnings. <laughs> wow. So, but how do we get to you know I'm gonna you know I'm gonna say <laughs> Ashiko. There we go. How do we go from that? How do we go from woven fishing lines? <laughs> Ashiko stitching. Like I don't like where's the bridge? <laughs> where's the connection there? Oh yes. my goodness. That's it. That is a good question. Let's see if I can summarize it. Um, so immediately after art school. So, okay, let's even go back a step. In Australia, because of our proximity to Japan and Asia, we get a lot of Asian influence in, into mm. our culture, either through the food uh, mm-hmm. There's lots of like restaurants and all those kind of good things, and I don't know, just a lot of the paraphernalia and patterns and that kind yeah. of thing. So um, it was kind of all around me anyway. Yeah. Plus, studying at textiles, um, you know, the Japanese have got some really strong um, mm. ways of working with the shibori and the indigo and yeah. the sashiko. Um, so I was always very interested in Japanese culture and soon after graduating uh, from art school, I was invited to participate in, ex- in an exchange in the Kyoto Seika University. So it was there that I really got, uh, it was my first time overseas in a non-English speaking country. Okay. And it just blew my mind, just... Um, Everything was so, so different, you know, vending machines for hot coffee in a can and vending machines for clean socks and (laughs) things totally different to what I was used to. So I was just enthralled by my experience over there. And funnily enough, to this day, I remember my travel back to Australia and... Mm -hmm. When I first got off the plane and I landed in Australia, because I was so used to the Japanese sensibility, I was just like, you know, Australia was assaulting me with loud noises and loud colours and loud everything. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I think I need to go back to Japan. (laughs) (laughs) And then temples. Um, So that Mm. was kind of like my first foray into into travelling and and Japan. Mm. And I also realised at that stage that I really enjoyed combining travel, learning and culture. Okay. So, yeah. um, throughout, and that's kind of been something that has woven my course uh, yeah. throughout my life. Um, yeah. So I've had the opportunity to study, learn and create in Italy, in London, UK, in Iceland, oh. uh, to name a few. Um, yeah, the Netherlands as well. I'm starting to lose track of them all, but 
that's kind of how I ended up in Halifax was um, I came over here to do an artist in residence program. Yeah. Um, long story short, amazing spot over here. The East Coast, I, I'm sure it might even be the same down where you are as well, just mm -hmm. full of creative people, people, yeah. uh, musicians, they're artists. There's a really strong um, cultural industry in Halifax. And yeah. so I was impressed. Everybody that I met was somehow a, a creative. So I thought, well, I've got to come back and I've got to study uh, my master's. So that's how I ended up over here. And then, of course, I met a very nice man and here I am now. <laughs> <laughs> he persuaded you to stay. <laughs> he kind of persuaded me to stay. Um, oh. Didn't take much persuasion, I tell you what. Um oh. So that's kind of how I, I'm over here on the East Coast. Uh, but yeah. getting back to the Sashko side of things, mm -hmm. um, it was so I, I had a, I was exposed to all of these most amazing patterns and designs and methods of working whilst I was in Japan. But I think mm -hmm. it wasn't until about 10 years ago that I really wanted to explore stitching further. Mm -hmm. And it was. Um, at the time, I think I was probably juggling three different teaching jobs in three different parts of the world. Well, oh, my yeah. part of the world. So, you know, zipping here, yeah. zipping there and zipping somewhere yeah. else. And it yeah. was it was busy. It was kind yeah. of had to, you know, there's always going to one place and then going to another one. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the classes I was teaching asked me to put together a sampler ahead of the class which yeah. to me was unusual because generally I'd just arrive at the class and we'd do something and everyone would have a wonderful time. Mm. So I'm, I'm like, oh, all right, I guess I'll have to sit down and stitch it. And I did. Mm. And it was through that process that I'm like, I actually really like sitting and stitching. It's amazing mm. how grounded I become, how calm I am, how yeah. centred my thoughts become and just kind of helps regroup I guess for right. want of a, a better way of saying things because you know a bit scattered here there and everywhere when you're teaching yeah. in different spots so yeah. that was kind of how um, the Ooh. stitching uh, methods came about and I've learned the Sashko from many different teachers over the years some are from Ooh. books some are from in-person classes and some of these mm. days are online as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of been been this ongoing experience. And what I love about it most is oh, a number of different things. The yeah. job, I, mm. I just love the way um, these patterns yeah. connect. Uh, and again, I think this goes back to the Japanese aesthetic, which I love and admire so much, is yeah. the simple yet complex yet simple. Yeah. Uh, and that's I, just thinking about it gives me goosebumps. I just really love how a, a pattern can look very complicated, but it yet it's very simple when broken down into easy to follow steps. But at the same time, it's taken a genius to figure out how to take this complicated pattern into yeah. very easy to follow steps. So, um, yeah, I, I love that part about the Sashko, but I also love um, that it came from the need to mend. Mm -hmm. And I, as a, someone who's grown up with a love of the land and the environment, I really like the ability to continue to preserve my clothes through these beautiful yeah. stickers, but yeah. also, um, you know, they don't have to go, you don't have to throw them out, you know, like there's nothing worse than your favourite pair of jeans getting a hole in them and mm -hmm. then going, oh, I can't wear them anymore. Right. You, you can just lend them. Yeah, exactly. So so now I, I encourage others to kind of look at things with a different lens or fresh mm. pair of eyes um, yeah. through through the mending process. So oh. that was the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> can I just take one step back, though, for, for folks who don't mm. know what Sashiko is, can you, I mean, just give, I mean, you could probably be here for another two hours explaining the whole history, but, like, just briefly, if someone is completely new, 
what is what is it exactly? Yeah. yeah, thank you. And that's a really good question because I'm so in the sticks with it all, I kind of forget to take a step back I know. and say, this is yeah. what it is. So yeah. um, at its very core, it is a very simple running stitch. So Sashko means um, little stabs or little stitches. Um, and it, it, it generally is used to layer fabrics together. So it's like a quilting method. Okay. And it came about uh, 500 years or so ago during the Edo period. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was developed in Japan because um, materials were scarce and um, so everything was used and reused and appropriated mm -hmm. as much as possible, uh, particularly in the northern climate in the northern parts of Japan where accessibility was difficult, remote regions, and also um, just really short growing seasons. They didn't have access to things like cotton, so they had to rely on other um, plant fibres like hemp and rami um, and the bark of some trees to mm. create cloth, which didn't generate that same kind of warmth that uh, cotton and other fibres can bring. So that's where some of the sashiko came into being because they would quite often layer their fabrics together for okay. warmth and they'd stitch yeah. them with these beautiful patterns. So the patterns kind of came about through, like they were functional and practical, right. but they also then turned them into these beautiful art forms as well. Yeah. And also part of the parameters that where this is evolved from is um, during feudal Japan there were different laws for different levels of society so mm -hmm. if you were on the lower echelons of uh, society then you weren't allowed to wear bright colored clothes and you okay. weren't allowed to have long elaborate embroideries on your costumes so mm -hmm. hence why Sashiko quite often is indigo blue that was yeah. a and a dye that was readily available at the time. And then the stitches quite often are, are considered no longer than a grain of rice so that they could fit into that criteria of a short stitch. And oh, yes. yes. Yeah. And so if you, so it's quite funny, or not funny, but it's amazing to think that if you stepped outside those rules, you know, it could be punishable by death just for oh my God. Flat, yeah. wearing the wrong colours or yeah. Having, wrong length of stitch so yeah so from these kind of like strict rules and boundaries yeah. all this beauty has appeared so mm. um and uh, yeah <laughs> it's like in the um court of henry the eighth like only the king and his immediate family could wear purple and, yeah. and they weren't they weren't allowed to use i think cl like cloth of gold was just for the royal family and then different levels of the court could and couldn't embroider their clothes it's a similar thing yeah it totally is yeah it's really fascinating yeah so a grain of rice so the stitches had to be the size of a grain of rice and so that's not embroidery so therefore it was allowed yeah yeah yes because oh. if you think of it there's some very very beautiful brocade embroidery with long stitches wow. and all that kind of stuff yeah. so it was to oh. prohibit that kind of style of embroidery Ooh. That's really neat. I'm going to, um, well, when I, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm looking over at the jeans I bought at a, a thrift store yesterday. I felt quite excited because I was buying a size, um, like eight jeans, which is pretty hilarious. And the, I'm sure, sure the young guy on the, on the till was like, yeah, she's buying a size eight pair of jeans. I wonder why she's doing that. Because <laughs> so, I'm not a size eight. But it was, uh, <laughs> so when I start doing, working on those jeans, I should be thinking about the grains of rice and, you know. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, so I love. I love. I love like little historical nuggets like that. Just you know. Yes, you know. and and that's what makes it so totally fascinating. And the other thing that's really interesting too. So mm. um, with the sashiko and these boro, so quite often they're very similar, and and people put them in the same category, so to speak. Boro yeah. means um, so boro is just l lots and lots of running stitch and. Um, as a way of repairing clothes uh, and translated it means rags oh, so okay. 
these rag cloths, uh, yeah. which these days uh, the boro that we see in museums and everything is very beautiful and very, very much admired. Um, but up until very recently, many people were very embarrassed to um, say that they had boro boro in their wardrobes because nobody likes to admit that they couldn't afford to buy new clothes and so they had to make oh, two. And yeah. so a lot of this stuff was hidden, uh, like yeah. people, like barn walls and underfloors and kind of used as um, yeah. anything but clothing. Uh, yeah. So it was great that someone had enough foresight to realise that these things were actually really of quite of cultural significance and beauty and started collecting them. Otherwise, they'd still be in barnyards and under floorboards and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Because people were embarrassed. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Funny. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Just well, yeah, I'm we... glad they did. That's Me really too. Neat. Me too. It just somehow we just got to change change the way we look at things to a, appreciate it in a different way. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Yeah. So, um, when did you when did you start Zen stitching? So, you know, you come to Canada, you've met Mr. Man Zen. Dreams, Mr. Zen. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been in Canada? This is my 10th year now, which is oh, crazy. Nice. And, yeah. I, and I say to everyone, long enough for my accent to disappear. <laughs> no, 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 it'll never disappear. <laughs> no, no, exactly. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, we don't want to either. <laughs> no, that's right. I forget. I, I forget. I think I just sound like everybody else. And then they're like, so where are you from? Uh, so yeah, ten years over here, and um, Zen stitching has been around officially as a as a name since maybe twenty twenty, I think it was. But it was it was I was also teaching Zen stitching as a program mm -hmm. um, earlier than that as well. So yeah, in person. Uh, yes, in person. That's right. Back in the good old days. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know the beauty of the internet. Yep, exactly. So, tw yeah. so twenty twenty is that when you started um, teaching online? Mm, yes, it yeah. dipped yeah. my toe in the um, the water, so to speak, and yeah. got incredibly nervous about being on a camera and you know all that funny stuff. Isn't it funny? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did because that's how you and I connected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. I know. And, and I'm, I'm guessing you might have had a, a similar experience, like the first time getting on a camera and not knowing what to say. It's and awful. It's awful. Trip, it's trip, it, it doesn't get any easier, but you just have to just do it and just show up and just think, well, people are kind and if they're not, they'll just turn it off. So <laughs> just that's click. Just interesting. <laughs> Before we, um, before you and I kind of talk a little bit about what we've been working on, I do um, I hope this isn't out of left field, but I, I'm just like, I have, I'm obsessed with finding out because I'm trying to solve the problem myself about folks who have, who have a business now te and, and teach professionally what they do, you know, their craft or their art, they teach it. How do mm -hmm. you, how do you stop yourself burning out when you're trying to you know, film classes, and I know that you're back to teaching in person somewhat as well, and you have some travel plans, which I, what I want to hear about as well. How do you balance, like, your own creative projects and, and coming up with fresh ideas, or, or, or don't you? Like, hmm. That is such a good question because uh, what I do personally is a lot of the time is so closely intertwined with Zen stitching. So, yeah. It's a question that I ask myself a lot and mm. I wonder how other people also manage it too. So, um, and it is, it's this very delicate balance between doing something that you love and not letting that overtake, take over, yeah. if you know what I mean? If oh, that makes sense. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess I have found um, ways to kind of bring the joy into the creation process is um, I always have a project on the go, mm. whether, it's, um, whether it's stitching or whether it's some other form of creativity. So, you know, I quite often have a, a knitting pattern that I'm, Got on oh, the really? 
X. Yeah, the yeah. mare knitting yeah. away there. Um, yeah. But I do find it's... And it's quite interesting. I'm just trying to think of mm. think of it because it it does does come in ebbs and flows. So when I'm in a creative practice, what I like to do is I feed a lot of information into my brain. So I'm always reading, mm. and I find that that kind of helps spark different ideas, whether it's a, a phrase or a, some, sometimes it's a bigger theme than that, then that will kind of start the ideas percolating. Mm. Um, so there's always, I'm always reading different things. So I try to read fiction and nonfiction because I find that both um, yeah. give inspiration in different ways. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you were a big reader as well. I've got oh. something new I learned about you today. <laughs> <laughs> I love reading. In fact, um, I generally have a pile of books wherever I go. It's, some, it's something I do to make myself feel comfortable, I think. I spread them out. Me too. I have in, <laughs> in the Airbnb I'm in right now, there's the coffee table is stacked high because, oh. you know, because why wouldn't you be looking in secondhand bookstores when you're traveling? Obviously. <laughs> well, I hope we get to tour and see what some of those books are. They sound like they could be quite fun. I'll put it on Instagram. How about that? Yes, yes, please do. <laughs> so that's interesting, though, that you um, you feed your sort of creativity through through reading and get you get ideas. That's that's really interesting. Do you ever take classes with other people? Um, or sort of because I find taking classes about unrelated things sometimes inspire me. Do you, do you ever yeah. do that? Oh, absolutely. I'm always that. And this is where it does get tricky because I, there's a lot of creativity that happens within Zen stitching with the filming and the recording and the making. So yeah. it's making making space for that making, but also creative making. So, for example, yes, I do take other courses and get inspired by other people. And Ali, you have very generously gifted me some of your courses. So I've been playing away. Would you like to see some of the things that I've been inspired by? Oh, well, yes, please. Well, I've taken yours as well. It's like <laughs> well, I didn't know that you'd made anything. Oh, yes. Who knew? It's news to me. I know. I, well, I thought if it comes up, I'll, I'll share it with you. So yes, please. This was, I got inspired by your Coptic yeah. book challenge. Yeah. And the, the cover's not very interesting. And that's because. Oh, I think it is. I want to put, oh, I want to put in a fabric cover on. Oh, you're going to wrap it around like yeah. with like yeah. two ribbons or something? Yes, so it's got it's got a pocket. Whoop, here we go. I'm yeah, there's the pocket. Yep, pocket there oh. for one side, and I've got to create the pocket on this side so that it will kind of sit in the sleeves. Oh, nice! Look at that. Oh, that so, is so I'm pretty excited about that. And then I, um, I host the making Zen online retreat, which brings a whole lot of other artists in. Yeah. They oh, teach yeah. lots of wonderful things. We and should some talk about them, that too. <laughs> we should. We should. Ah, oh, so many things to talk about. I know. <laughs> 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 we could be here all day, literally. Um, there, so there's a, an artist, Susan Ledescamol, I think is her name, and she does a lot of natural dyeing. Ooh, nice. Dyeing. So this is naturally dyed, inspired yeah. by her. And then Amy Maracle, who was doing a printing with string. So yeah. this is a string print on top. But this is one of your beautiful books. Oh, yes. Yes, the long stitch. Oh, yes. cute. Yes. Nice. So I am so impressed. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, but I love how that book, though, is it's almost like a collaboration between like different artists who you've learned things from and then you, you put your own spin on it to create something. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. And that's where um, making Zen really comes into its own because there's generally 20 different artists and they all come in and they teach something special and it all happens within a week and everybody gets inspired by all these different 
ways of creating and of course there's not enough time to create each individual project so sometimes yes. you get these fascinating mashups of this concept with this project with this material and yeah. they come together in ways that are yeah you, you couldn't 28? wow That's 20 20 oh, 20 20 mm. but even yeah. so that's still a lot that's a lot but how yeah. often do you do making zen it's bi-annual, so twice twice a year. And we've got one coming up in September, which is when we do that. Oh, have you? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, excellent. <laughs> nice. Ooh. So if you oh, need shall... to inspiration, that's a really good place to go. It is. It's a little yeah. bit like sketchbook revival that I did earlier this year that um, – yeah, just a whole bunch of artists. And then it's quite nice because you can just dip your toe into lots of different things before you sort of, you know, instead of committing to like a whole six-week class on just whatever the, the subject is, I do quite like that, dipping your toe, and then you can kind of pick and choose what you like and maybe take one or two things a bit further and then just leave the rest on the table because, I mean, there's only so many hours of the day. So. Exactly. And there's only, sometimes not everything that you are exposed to is, resonates as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although I do find that uh, these days, if I have the time, I make a point of doing even the things that don't resonate because I find there's always a nugget of gold in there. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it's the, the areas of most resistance where you get, where I personally anyway, get the most from. Oh, maybe I should keep that in mind because I tend to play safe. Like, you know, I mean, go for things that are just like almost like I know I'm going to like. Like it's kind of in my wheelhouse. So, hmm. Yeah. That's a good, yeah. That's a good advice. Like step outside your comfort zone. And totally. Yeah. Hmm. And it's funny that you should say that actually because one of the things that I did in the Netherlands was I did it was a week intensive with a, a jewellery artist and he really yeah, so I also studied jewellery. That's another story. <laughs> he um, he yeah. really, really encouraged us and pushed us to the absolute edges of what we felt comfortable doing. And yeah. it wasn't comfortable and it was really challenging. But, like, to this day, that's what I have got the most from. It's amazing. Really? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Like it, the experience itself, I was yeah. so confrontated, <laughs> but in a good way, in a good yeah. way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, talking of um travel, um, you are heading out on a trip, like in a couple of days, pretty much. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? About that? And then I promise we'll talk about our collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know we really could talk all day. Um, so going back to your, how do you? bring mm. uh, into your creative life which is always always something that I I do try and you know try and balance and struggle yeah. with and yeah. I wonder how other people do the same thing myself uh, but one of the things I do like to do going back to this like to travel culture yeah. and learn um, myself and Mr Zen are participating in an artist in residence program in France and mm -hmm. We're super excited about it. We're, we happen to be staying in a castle in Champagne country, so it's, it's going to be tough. <laughs> really? So Mr Zen is an artist too? He is, yes. He's a oh. musician, which is oh, fabulous. Uh, yeah. So he has, the, he has the creative level of connect, connecting. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So we can talk ideas together, which is really lovely. Yeah. Um, but his output is sound. And yeah. he's amazing with what he does. And so, yeah, we're going to be immersed for two weeks in the French countryside. And mm -hmm. um, what I love about this is so it's two weeks. How often do you get a chance to step outside of your daily life, mm -hmm. set aside all of the daily commitments that? you know, we kind of take on board yeah. uh, just to focus on art. So that's quite quite a really lovely experience. It's also quite scary at the same time. It's like, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do? I hope it's okay. Do you, um, planned? do you have a project planned? I've got lots of things planned, so yes. Okay. 
But okay. one of one of the things, so one of one of the angles that I'm looking at is literally just going and absorbing the culture and doing lots of drawings and taking lots of notes. And yeah. I, I quite like working with Super 8 camera footage, so I'll Ooh. be recording all of that. Uh, so I'm kind of, it's like a collecting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not fact, but collecting. Like yeah, just collecting experiences and ex yeah. sights and smells and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and inspiration. Mm -hmm. An inspiration, yeah. So the, it's it's in sense in some senses is that because when you do residencies in another country, there's always this fine balance between how much fact finding yeah. you do versus time in the studio. So it's something that you're kind of always navigating. Yeah, so there's, we're going to do some of that. Um, and then there's the definite studio time. I think. Just being in the French countryside and having that time is going to be really helpful for ideas to percolate and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Mr. Zen, um, because he's into sound, wants to go to local churches, play mm -hmm. the organ and record the sounds and all that kind of thing. So that's that's going to be amazing. And then just being in these beautiful old churches is inspiring anyway with the stained glass windows. So I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm taking so many specially made sketchbooks with me <laughs> <laughs> to, to fill up with, you know, just yeah. goodies and drawings and ideas yeah. and all that kind of stuff but one of the ideas that I am really interested in exploring a little bit further and yeah. I think I'm hoping it will manifest in such a way so in some cultures the idea of there's a red thread that connects us all yeah and being a textile artist I just love that connection to the thread and yeah. I love this idea of connectivity Mm. So that's the large premise of one of the concepts that I'm working on is this red thread mm. idea. And we've been given big stables to work in the old horse stables. Really? Oh, mm. oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm seeing an installation of red yeah. thread, but how that happens I'm not sure. So. Wow. Holy moly. Where can folks um, follow along? Are you going to be posting on Instagram or do you think you're just going to take a break from social media while you're over there? Uh, that's such a good question. And I don't think I'll be able to answer that until I'm in the country and all that kind of stuff. I think I would like to share what I'm up to because it's just I love seeing when other people go on these mm. wild trips. I love yeah. seeing what they get up to and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it'll probably happen, but maybe sporadically. Yeah. Um and to follow along, I'm on the socials in two different spots. At Zen Stitching is all stitching focused. Yep. And then there's also my artist page, which is Kate Ward underscore designs. And so okay. that's that's where a lot of that will be featured. Okay, as that's well. good to know. I shall make sure that we link to those below. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably see lots of pictures of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, my goodness. But I'm sure even if you don't post while you're there, you'll do. Um, folks can sign up for your newsletter, and I'm sure you'll probably do a, like a few blog posts, right, to let, yeah, you know, let folks know sort of eventually what you've, I'm guessing, what you've yes. kind of worked on. And so. Yeah, yes, that's right. It's curating the many photos down into the few, isn't it? That's where it gets exactly. tricky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's great to know. So. Back to the original question, you know, how do you stay inspired? One of the ways that you do is, you know, through travel and looking out for opportunities like this, like the artist residence. And yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. And and the other thing too that I didn't touch upon with this artist residency is it's yeah. uh, there's going to be about twelve other artists. So Ooh. you know, just connecting with other people and yeah. seeing what they're up to and. Yeah. Having those creative conversations, I think that opens up possibilities mm. too. You know, they say, oh, I don't know what they say, but more people together, better ideas. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, I know what you mean. No, it's true though because I bet you they're from different 
you know, they probably got different mediums, work in different mediums from different walks of life, different countries probably, and yeah. the perspectives you get will be amazing. Yeah, mm. totally. Yes, yes. And it's artists and writers, so I'm hoping there'll be a few oh, writers. <gasps> oh, I got chills. I'll, <laughs> I'll just hop in your suitcase if that's okay. <laughs> Absolutely, by all means. I've got room for, I've got room for you. <laughs> okay, thank you. That'd be great. <laughs> so just to wrap up, you and I have been um, working on a little something for the past few months, and we just launched it, I think, was it last week? I think last Monday. It was, yeah, about yeah. a week ago. Yeah. This time last week, crazily enough. Yes. I know. Yes. Would, um, it's called Zen Books, and it's a six-week program. Would you Would you like to give a few details on it? Oh, absolutely. So this is another way where I think um, extending that creativity helps. So, you know, working in partnership with you, Ali, means that we've taken – two things that people love doing, making books and stitching, and we've brought them together uh, mm -hmm. to have this wonderful program, Zen Books. Um, I'm sharing a little bit of Sashko stitching so people learn how to do four different Sashko stitches. And mm -hmm. quite often with patterns uh, in the Sashko in Japan, they're um, related to seasons and and all of the environment and that kind of thing. So I've chosen four patterns that are related to summer, mm -hmm. uh, flower patterns in particular, and teaching those. There's also a small little solar dyeing component. So if you want to add a little bit of colour from your kitchen or colour from your garden, you can. So that's a nice little dimension. And then yeah. you have brought in your wonderful expertise on how to turn this into a book. Yes, so yes, Kate. Um, so what happened was Kate sent me um, some or some recycled jeans that she had done the stitching on, and then I sewed them into a Japanese stab binding called um, a hemp leaf binding. And so I know that Kate chose her flower, her summer flower stitches, to kind of mirror the hemp leaf binding. So um, yes, I'm going to be show you how how to do um, a traditional binding with both an inner and an outer binding. So, so yeah, so that's that's our little collaboration for the summer, and it is um, open for registration for six weeks. And um, but they, you know, folks will have a whole year to access the cl uh, the class, and um, we've also done a Facebook group too, so people can share. So. Yes. And we're starting to see all kinds of fun things as people are doing solar dyeing and stitching and stitching into different um, materials and everything too. So I think it's going to be quite fascinating to see, again, kind of thinking about this collaboration process, how people yeah. are going to take their stitching aesthetic and their bookmaking aesthetic and combine it for these beautiful yeah. Zen books. I know, I can't wait to see them. So yeah, if that sounds like something you're interested in, I will leave a link down below. And um, if it's past time and uh, the collaboration has ended, you can um, connect with Kate and I um, by checking out all the links down below too. Um, so that, oh, it was so much fun chatting to you. Each time I talk with you, I find out new things about you. So um, <laughs> we'll just have to do it again sometime and find out more. So. I think so. Sounds good. <laughs> I would love that. And um, I am looking forward to your program in September too. So I'll definitely be signing up for that. And um, when when does that go on sale, Kate? Oh, let's see. So it is um, the last week in September. So the 25th to the 29th of September is when oh, the okay. event runs. Uh, yeah. Tickets will be available ahead of that. So if you choose to purchase the ticket, um, tickets will be available two weeks prior to that. So I think that's the okay. 14th give or take okay. um there is also a free version so people who want to maybe just see if it's for them then each of the um, workshops is available for 24 hours uh, and to find out more about that that's at makingzen.com you can sign up and check out all the amazing artists that we have on board so if you're a textile artist a bookmaker or someone who's interested in working with paper you'll mm. you'll be guaranteed to find something that you enjoy within there so much goodness so much goodness nice. oh i love it i love it i should be doing that this year i promise so all right well thank you so much for joining me um it's been great chatting with you and enjoy your residency in france i shall be 
wishing you well and trying not to be too jealous. And um, I can't <laughs> wait to see like what comes out of it, like what new ideas you come up with and um, yeah, where, where, it, where it takes you, where the red thread takes you. So. Yes, yes. All exciting connections, I'm sure. Thank you, Ali. It's so lovely to connect. I love chatting with you. Likewise, Kate. Thank you so much. And um, remember, folks, connect with Kate in all the um, juicy links below. All right. Take care, everyone. And I will see you all very soon.